So as you may know, I like to self-host my Next.js applications. I'm currently using Railway, but you can use whatever service or if you have your own VPS, you can set up Coolify and deploy it there. But there are a couple of additional steps you should take to deploy your Next.js application. I want to kind of talk through those and also explain Docker a little bit in this video. So stick around if you're interested in learning more about Docker and how you can deploy your Next.js application to uh, Railway in this specific example. But I think it applies to basically any type of deployment. So the first thing is if you go to this deploying guide on Next.js, they have a self-hosting section, right? The most basic way is just run npm run build and npm run start inside a computer somewhere, a VPS somewhere, and that'll host your Next.js application. Now, but for most people's needs, you're probably gonna end up using Docker. Um, and the way you can do it in Docker, it's a little bit more nuanced. So let's go ahead and look at a example. So basically, if you look at this example here, they have a Docker file. It's a little beefy. I mean, it has some stuff and I want to walk you through how some of this stuff works. And also like this didn't work for me just from cloning this. I had to do some additional steps to make this work for my projects. So we're not going to use this example in particular. We're going to be talking about the code that I did. So over here, we have my, uh, my portfolio site, webdevcoding.com. And as you can see, we have a Docker file that is basically a clone of the repo we just saw, but I tweaked a couple of things, which I'll talk about. And then secondly, they don't explain it in the docs anymore. Um, I don't know why, maybe it's not necessarily needed, but there's this standalone flag that you can put in your next config. And what this does is it enables like tracing and basically makes your deployment a lot smaller which means that you'll have a smaller container. The one benefit is says that the Next.js can automatically create a standalone folder that copies only the necessary files for production deployment, including select files and node modules. So somehow it like traverses your code and figures out what do you actually need to run the application and what is just like not necessary. Otherwise you might have like a bunch of uh, random node modules that you don't need or something. So to set that up, all you need to do is just put output standalone. But when you do that, there's a couple of additional things you have to do in your Docker file, okay? So here is the Docker file. I want to walk you through Docker. If you're unfamiliar with Docker, it seems intimidating, but it's not that bad. Basically, when you create a Docker file, you specify what base image you want to use. So like they have tons of different images on dockerhub.com and they have like different versions of Ubuntu, Debian, Linux flavors, they have Alpine. Now I'm using Node 20 with Slim. Node 20 is the current LTS. And Slim is basically a traditional like Linux distribution, but it doesn't have a bunch of additional things installed on it. Now the smallest one you can get, if you want to get like the smallest container possible so that your builds are fast and deploying the image somewhere is fast, you can use Alpine. But the issue with Alpine is sometimes it doesn't have as good as compatibility with something like Slim or just using Ubuntu or Debian. But anyway, you define what base image you want. And then I'm specifying an alias here, so as base, which means we can kind of reference that later on with this multi-stage Docker file. Okay, if you see these multiple as builders, as runner, this means it's a multi-stage Docker file, which allows you to further make your final container very, very small when it's being deployed. So this whole block is the second stage of this build. And what I'm doing here is basically grabbing that base image and then make it another alias called builder. And then we run a bunch of steps inside of this stage. The first thing that happens is we're copying the package JSON, which is defined here in our actual like projects file system. And we're copying the package lock and we're putting it inside of our Docker image as it's being built. Okay, so these are the source files and then this is like the destination. And we're putting it inside a slash app directory. So if you imagine when we're building this with the Docker build command, there's like a separate image that's currently being built up that almost acts like its own machine. Okay, so we get these package JSON files over and then we run npm install, uh, more specifically CI, and then that's gonna install all the node modules on the machine. And then finally we copy over everything inside this directory into the Docker image itself. Now, one thing I'm pointing about the copy command is that it typically looks through your project for a dot docker ignore, which I'm glad I'm making this video because I didn't have one. But you typically specify all the files you want to ignore when you're building up the container. And it's very important to skip the .git file because that could potentially be large. Any of your pre-built next files, your node modules. And so that's why we have to kind of do an NPM CI inside of this Linux machine first 
because again, there could be underlying binaries that are built specifically for this version of OS or your architecture. And so we kind of just like want to make sure that we run NPM CI inside the image as it's being built instead of just copying over all the node modules that are on my, uh, my laptop into the container itself. Okay, so hopefully you guys are learning. I'm just trying to walk you through as much as I can about Docker and how it kind of works. So the next steps is I'm just kind of hard coding some environment variables. I want to turn off next telemetry because I don't want for cell tracking everything I'm doing when I'm building this. Honestly, they're probably just trying to get stats to see who's running npm build. So you can keep this uh, on if you want, it doesn't really matter. Node environment production. Obviously we were building for production, so we want to keep this as production. So this part is important when you're deploying to specifically railway. You might need it for other services, but their approach to basically get your environment variables from your builder. So if you go to like what I've Cody over here and go to variables, I have all these variables defined and I need them to be available when I'm building the image, at least some of them. Okay. So I'm basically defining some args here and anything that you define as an arg, if it's defined in your railway variables, it'll get passed into the image as it's being built. And this is important for at least the next stuff. I don't necessarily know if I need to pass in table name or recapture secret. Those are more like runtime environment variables. Now, the reason we do this is because when you run npm run build, remember Next.js is going to try to generate your static files and it does need to have your environment variables set up as it's traversing your React server components and building up those static pages. Sometimes you'll have a page that needs to connect to a database to fetch some preloaded data for its static um, initial skeleton or whatever. And so these are kind of things you need to have set. And so once this is all done, remember we have a, a multi-stage, I guess you can call that a layer called builder. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to create another one from base as runner, where we define a bunch of things here. Okay. So again, we still define these same environment variables because this stage is kind of isolated from this stage. It's almost like you're building two separate images as the Docker file is being built. Mm -hmm. So we do have to redefine some things. So in this case, we are making uh, some users. So we're creating like a Node.js user group and a Next.js user. This is the important part to understand is that this copy command, you can pass it a flag and say from builder. And that is going to reference the image, I'm sorry, the stage that we kind of built up here. So you can kind of grab any files that were built inside of this builder image and pull them into this one. So what this is doing, is saying grab me all of the public files that we just built when we ran this command inside of this stage and put it in my public folder that's in my current runner stage. You all confused yet? Hopefully you're not. Um, and then also we create a .next file, we ch own it, so we have permissions to modify it and access it. And then again, we're copying some other things from the builder. We're copying the .next folder and also the .next static because for some reason the static assets are not pulled over um, by default when you're using standalone mode. And then finally we say, use the next JS user, expose port 30, hard code port 30 as an environment variable. And also this is very important if you're using Cloudflare tunnels. Uh, basically I'm saying allow someone to pass in a host name to this so that when I run node server, it knows how to bind to the proper host name of the machine. Okay, so let me just go ahead and push this. I'll just say add docker ignore. And let me show you the process of this thing getting deployed out. So as you can tell, it is currently building my image. You can kind of click on this and view as it's going through the image and building it up. If you want to view the logs as it's building this, you can kind of watch those. By the way, all the stuff I'm doing with this uh, Docker file, you don't have to do it. When you just point railway to your um, Next.js repo, it's going to automatically just build a container and just do npm start. But it does take a lot longer because it's not using that smaller slimmed um, image that we talked about. It's using probably some Ubuntu image or some larger image. And so it takes a lot longer to build and it takes longer to deploy. So as this is building, I do want to talk about something that's very important. So I'm using Cloudflare tunnels for this setup. Basically this, this thing is not publicly accessible. Um, typically when you deploy to railway, you go to settings, you can go here and click generate domain. And that is going to give you a URL that anyone on the internet can hit. I haven't set that up. I'm just doing private networking because I don't want someone to potentially get access to where my server is running and DDoS it. And one way that I'm protecting this from DDoS is instead I'm using a cloud flared runner, which basically makes a tunnel between Cloudflare and my running machine so that all the traffic 
has to go through this uh, Cloudflare DDoS protection. Now, in order to get this set up, you literally just go here, and I typed in, like, uh, input, I believe, and I said, like, cloud flared, and I clicked on this tunnel thing, and then you have to just give it a Cloudflare token, like this. There's my tunnel token. And then in Cloudflare, I'm not going to walk you through that, but you basically set up a, a tunnel. You point it to uh, your internal name. So if you go over here, there's an internal internal. That's what you use when you set up Cloudflare's tunnels. And then the uh, everything should work, except for there's one more thing you have to do. You see there's like a webdevcody slash com here. You have to add that as a host name. So if I were to go and view this, notice that I'm supplying a host name here. And the reason I'm doing that is because when Next.js tries to run, it tries to bind to whatever host name you have provided. In the GitHub repo example that Vercel provides, they say you can use 0.0.0.0, .0, which works fine until you have a tunnel set up. The tunnel is looking for a particular host name. And so that's why you're passing in that host name I just talked about here so that when the next server runs, it knows how to bind to the proper host name. And then after everything is done deploying, you can see my application is up and running. So I think there's one thing that I need to point out here is that when you're self-hosting and you install Sharp, which they do recommend doing, so in your project, if you do self-host, you need to go and install the Sharp package. Definitely important to do. But the issue is that when you install this, if you're deploying to Linux platforms, you may need to do some additional configurations to prevent excessive memory usage. And that's something I'm actually seeing in a lot of my machines is that over time, the memory just keeps growing and I have to often just go in every couple of days and just restart the machine um, if I don't want to get charged for the extra memory that Railway is going to charge me for. Okay, so I haven't really looked too much into this. I need to look into this, but basically they're saying when you use Sharp, and you have like Ubuntu or Debian or Red Hat or whatever, they're using glibc. And for some reason, when you have that installed on your system, Sharp like uh, uses a glibc allocator and it causes a bunch of like excessive memory usage. Um, their recommendation is to change it to JE malloc, which isn't an issue if you're using Alpine. But again, the reason I'm not using Alpine is because I was running into issues with uh, SQLite. I had like a SQLite adapter and it was failing on Alpine for some reason. So I think if you want to use as little memory as possible, you should probably be using Alpine here. Um, but just keep in mind that some node modules may not be compatible with it, and you'll have to go and put some extra work into like figuring that out. So that's kind of my next steps, is I want to get this working with Alpine so that I don't have the issues with this uh, sharp and the memory allocation. But, but unfortunately, that's just, uh, you know, I don't have time to keep doing all these little optimizations. I just want my app to work. And that's what you're going to run into when you self-host the Next.js application. So love it or hate it, this is how you can do it. And uh, feel free to leave a comment if there's anything I missed out or you wanted me to explain more in the future. Have a good day. Happy coding.